What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, we have covered or continuing the series of the new Soulbound Reward Cards deep dive. We have covered all of these splinters so far: fire, water, earth, and life in previous videos. So today's video is going to be the death splinter, and we're going to start with the summoner first, which is a rare card, and that is Octavia Shadow Meld. Now, Octavia Shadowmeld uh, was de w w the the debuff was changed. Originally, I remember seeing a screenshot of it with a minus one melee, which would have made for a very interesting modern summoner kind of uh, availability. But uh, at this point, they have changed it, and I don't think they're changing it back from that to now minus one health, which can still be very powerful in many ways. Uh, but again, it's like a slightly more expensive Thaddeus Brood without the magic help. Again, for those who are new, you do get the conscript ability and there are some interesting death monsters out there or death gladiators, I should say. So, you know, um, we'll have to see if it ends up being worthwhile. All right, we'll start with the commons and work our way up. Possessed Puppet. Now, if you had joined any of the live streams or Splinterlands TV streams, you'll know that I immediately liked this card because I got beat down by Darkest Night with it. From the get-go, you get seven mana for a, a melee tank here. Now, it does not have a lot of health, only two health, but it is it does have double strike and does three damage per each of those hits. So seven mana, six, uh, seven mana, six damage per turn with a speed of three. So it's not super fast, but if you do a maxed for bronze, right, all of a sudden you get that third health, which can be crucial in many ways, but more importantly, in my opinion, you get a speed of four and down in, I mean, the speed meta is important at any level, but definitely down in bronze, I think, um, you know, e even more so. Now, when you get up to level five, which is maxed for silver, you get that additional attack. So now seven mana, you're doing eight damage per turn with a speed of five. I think this thing can be absolutely dominant if you are able to go first in many instances um, with this card or potentially use some kind of taunt ability to uh, to direct attention away from it. It can be doing grund-like damage for less than the mana cost, right? With that and, and, and faster too, right? Five speed, seven mana. Um, so it's, it's definitely a card that is interesting to me. In gold, you do get the cripple ability as well as an increased health and increased speed. So to me, um, you know, again, it, it becomes much more interesting. Seven mana is still a little expensive for something that can't take much of a hit. But in certain rule sets, maybe even like an equalizer rule set, uh, imagine imagine being able to do seven mana for or eight damage for seven mana with a monster that moves super quick, as well as doing cripple to a potential like self healing first opponent, something like a Bakjira or whatever the case is, right? So uh, what I'm really liking about I'm really liking that. And then at the highest levels, I think Dispel is going to become much more popular. And again, you'll be able to hit it twice. Again, Dispel isn't a percentage-based, right? If you hit it, you do Dispel it automatically. There's no like 50-50. But having that kind of be the icing on the cake, I think, is, is really nice. And again, this is a card that I can see being used in many scenarios from the lower levels up. Okay, the other card here, and I heard that this was nerfed, but I don't know what it had before, is the Wily Kyoshin. Now, at the lowest levels, uh, again, this guy is... It's not it's not much of a tank, in my opinion. Sure, maxed for bronze, uh, you get an additional armor as well as an additional health, but there's no there's nothing special in terms of something like a Crypt Beetle, right, where for three mana, at least you're getting the shield ability. In, in many cases, it, yeah, if it's a non-magic game, there's going to be five hit points that your opponent needs to go through. And for two mana, it's not terrible and could be, could be great in like a, a low mana super sneak or opportunity rule set uh, or equal opportunity rule set. But as you see later, he is meant for some kind of magic-based game because he gets phase. But we're skipping ahead. Let's go down to maxed for silver first. And you can see here that he has an additional health, or sorry, additional health and an additional speed, uh, which again, makes for someone interesting, but he can't do much damage with it. And then in gold, you get that additional speed as well as health and the phase ability. So he becomes interesting there. Uh, for two mana, he becomes kind of an anti-magic tank in low mana games. Um, Again, the speed the speed works nicely, and I'm immediately thinking like he's useful if you want to play death against uh, against like an obsidian based team where a lot of those monsters are actually really slow, um, but uh, a lot of the magic based monsters. Uh, but then at the highest levels, you do get that second damage again. 
it's I don't know how much I use this card. I heard it got nerfed, and it, it does seem like it's been nerfed pretty badly. So let's go ahead and move on to the rare cards. Now, we already talked about the summoner, but you got Ravenhood Warden here, which at the lowest levels is going to give you Protect, which, again, I, I think this is an awesome ability for level one. We don't normally see Protect available for death, so the fact that you can get this from Novice upwards with this card makes me believe he's going to have a lot of utility even early on, right? So even if, I, even if I'm playing in gold, but I get him and I want to use a protect monster for four mana, I mean, he fits the bill, right? Uh, he, he, he'll die relatively easily, but since he's a ranged monster, I wouldn't put him in the front. I'd probably put him more towards the back. Now at, uh, at let's, let's just skip to the max for silver here. You do get that second damage. So four mana for two damage makes it a little bit more palatable as an, uh, as a, an offensive option. But here's where he gets interesting. In gold, you get the Inspire ability as well as an additional speed, but think about uh, the awesome melee monsters within the Death Splinter. And I'm immediately going to Cursed Wendeku. Uh, we just looked at the, the Possessed Puppet and Silent Shavit. There's a lot of options there which could which he could benefit and be an awesome support monster for starting in gold. And then, of course, maxed out, you get an additional health. So now four mana, four health, three speed, and that two damage. But you also get the Fury ability, which, again, turns your two damage into four damage. I don't know if it's much, obviously... Obviously, it's very situational, right? But uh, it can be very valuable, I'm sure, in many instances. But just to protect and inspire up until the gold, um, uh, or up into gold, I should say, I think makes this a really awesome support card in many ways. All right, let's move on to the epic card. And the epic cards, for, for those who might not have been paying attention, these are all the ones that do not have any kind of attack ability. They are non-attack monsters. And this one is a little expensive, in my opinion. Six mana four damage or sorry four speed it's decent meat shield with a health of nine and it does from the get-go give you the weaken ability so it reduces your opponent's health by one so now i'm immediately thinking of like well is there is there a redemption opportunity because you have the minus one health for the the summoner here uh, as well, I mean, you also have minus one health for someone like Thaddeus Brood. Uh, so you can use the weaken ability and then try to <laughs> redemption your opponent in many ways. But you also have flying, right? So not great from a magic perspective, but flying in a speed of four at the at level one isn't bad. Now, where so I guess at level at level three, which is max for silver, you do get a couple more hit points here. So it makes it a decent meat shield. But at the higher level, so in gold, uh, you do get the silence ability, which I think works well for a card like this because since it doesn't have any anti-magic properties such as phase or or void or void armor or anything like that, um, you do get silence, which will reduce your opponent's magic attacks, um, which is the only thing that this is susceptible to. And then, of course, at the highest levels, you get the blind ability. So it's a it's a quite a, a hefty price tag, in my opinion, for a non-attacking monster. Um, but I'm trying to think of like when would I use this over something like a over something like a Riftwing, right? Riftwing is four mana, so it's it's cheaper than this. It doesn't have as many hit points from the get-go, but Riftwing will, as more monsters die, it will add to its life uh, or increase its health. Um, the other thing, too, with Riftwing is that you get the backfire ability, right? So that makes it almost offensive in some ways, where if you know that you can, you know, take advantage of, of that, you can do damage to your opponent, whereas obviously Will of Wisp will not be able to. But the the silence and um, and blind ability are interesting if you want that kind of support. Again, I think it'll be very specific rule sets that you might be going up against, uh, but, you know, it's... It's just okay in my opinion. It's not my, it's not my favorite of the epic cards overall. And then finally, let's move into the legendary cards. Now, here is the first uh, of which which has the, uh, what's that called? The weapons training ability. And this is another magic-based monster. So similar to the life one we were just talking about. This is magic-based monster, which gives one magic damage to each of its, uh, each of its adjacent monsters. Again, if they're not attacking. Otherwise, then it doesn't really matter. So again, eight mana here for four damage maximum, right? If uh, if you if you surround them with not with with attacking monsters, then you don't get that uh, you don't get that benefit. It's just eight mana for two damage, and so I, I don't know. It's kind of slow. It doesn't get any faster. It doesn't get any beefier. Uh, you do get the fury ability later on, which could be interesting. I do like the idea of resurrect within the death splinter. Um, but again, that's going to be at the gold level. And then at the highest levels, you do get that third magic damage, which again, 
if you pair it with someone like Will-O-Wisp or you pair it with someone like Riftwing on each side, could make things interesting, right? Because now you're doing seven magic damage potentially for uh, for eight mana, uh, as well as maybe silence and all the other abilities that come with it. So uh, again, I, I'm, I'm liking the card. I think that uh, it's not my favorite out of the weapons training. I think the fire one is still probably my favorite, but overall, it's not bad. And then Usut, uh, this was supposed to be, I believe, a Rift Watchers airdrop card, but uh, we it got changed out last minute for Kane Haste. And now we see it here, 10 mana. So this is a giant. And you can see at the lowest levels, it comes with the Bloodlust ability. So what I like about it right off the bat is it is flying. And I think it's supposed to be like an undead dragon or something like that. So that's why it's technically under death. Yeah, it's a red dragon's corpse. Um, and what I like about it is it's actually slow. And you kind of like that in some instances when you're playing with Bloodlust because you want him to be the last attacker. And he's doing, you know, magic. I wish it was more magic damage, but I'll take two magic damage for right now. Where this gets interesting, especially with the weapons training ability that's out there, is he does get the oppress ability at level two. So now that could be four damage against something like a Riftwing or a Will-O-Wisp or whatever, you know, whatever other cards might be out there. And then this is where I'm really starting to become a fan. You get another self-healing monster for the death team. Now, Curse Windeku is one of my favorites, but again, that is up front in, uh, in the melee position. This is someone that you can hide in the back and allow them to really use the bloodlust to their uh, their um, you know their benefit if they can start to kill off some monsters. And keep in mind, at 11 health, you're only healing two, uh, is it two? No, you're, you're healing up to three maybe. Um, at, once you get to four, or once you get to 12, you're healing up to five, I believe. Or sorry, you're healing up to four. So I think I was wrong in my previous video for the life ability. Forgive me if that's if that's the case. Uh, but either way, um, this one is going to be, I, this is a card that I definitely want to level up to gold just for the bloodlust, oppress, and healing abilities. But even still, in silver, I think this card can be an absolute unit in many ways. Um, so that is it for the Death Splinter. Lots of good stuff here. And we'll have one more final video for uh, Dragon and Neutral. I'll combine those together. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.